Okay, welcome to part two of the lecture 12 videos. So we saw this generic uh, family of algorithms for uh, that give us a differentially private uh, approach to optimization. And now what we'd like to do is understand at least one setting when we can analyze when those algorithms are gonna work. So let's imagine that the loss function we're trying to optimize is convex. And uh, we're optimizing over uh, a set C whose diameter we know, uh, we know. And so, oops, sorry, that doesn't look very convex. Um, so here's our uh, convex set C. It's still not very convex. I can't draw. Uh, and uh, what we're assuming is that it's uh, um, that the ma maximum distance between any two points in C is at most R. And we'll also assume that the uh, function is Lipschitz, so we know some upper bound on how quickly it varies as you move around the space. Then uh, what we can say is that if, um, so let, let's let W star be a minimizer. So W star is a minimizer of the loss on the set C. Uh, then if we set um, eta to be uh, in a particular way, so to be about one over square root of t, uh, then what we can say is that the excess risk of this algorithm, the basic um, non-noisy gradient descent, uh, is going to be bounded above by r times g over square root of t uh, for regular uh, projected gradient descent. So this is going to be our kind of basic theorem that we're going to work with. And then we're going to see how to modify it to get the thing we want. So the, uh, the second theorem we'll, we'll show uh, is that um, for noisy stochastic gradient descent, um, noisy uh, PGD, we can set T and eta and sigma to get the following regret bound the, to show that our expected regret, uh, or sorry, our expected um, excess risk uh, is bounded above by uh, sort of the same kind of one over square root of t behavior. Uh, and if we sort of get things going in the right way, what we what we get is a regret bound on the order of r times times g again, times square root of d log one over delta over epsilon. Uh, under the same assumptions on L. Okay, and the the thing I want you to notice is that relative to um, relative to uh, the exponential mechanism we saw last time, uh, our dependency on D got changed into sort of D log one over delta. So that's, that's kind of like going from Laplace to a uh, Gaussian noise, or, or rather from weak composition to strong composition basic composition, strong composition. But actually, there's something else going on too, is that in this process, not only did we get a better scaling in the dimension, uh, but we got a much more versatile algorithm because uh, this algorithm always runs in polynomial time. In fact, it runs in time you know, more or less linear in the number of iterations you take. And so that really is the, uh, the big win, is that it's a, it's a very general purpose optimization procedure that you can try to apply not only to convex functions, but also to other ones.
So these are our two theorems, and we're going to start uh, with um, the first one and then turn to the second one. We'll call them theorem A and theorem B, not to get mixed up with the uh, numbering in the lecture notes. OK, so let's try and analyze um, just the non-noisy projected gradient descent, just to get a sense of what's going on. Uh, we're going to need a, a lemma about the projection step. So the, the only lemma we need is that like if C is uh, closed and convex, Uh, then uh, for all x, for all possible points in R to the d, so this is where it's assuming C lives in R to the d, um, the distance from the projection of x, uh, onto C of x to any other point in uh, the set So this is all, all the norms I'm going to use are, are L2 norms in this lecture. So I'm going to, I'm, I won't put the two everywhere. Uh, this is less than the distance from the X, the original X to the, that point in the set. So the sort of picture you should have in your mind is, you know, here's set C, here's some W, and now here's some set, some point X. And I'm going to project down onto uh, the set X. And what I get is that this distance um, from the projection to W, that distance is less than the distance from the projection to the original vector X. And, and really the, the proof in, in, you know, in, a, in a quick picture is that like this angle here Always, is always at least 90 degrees when C is convex. So this is our proof. So I won't go through the arithmetic, but uh, that's the way it works. Okay, so you can read a more careful proof in the uh, notes or maybe consider working through it yourself. So let's use this lemma to uh, understand, oh, you know, how to understand like the what happens with projected gradient descent. So let's now uh, prove this theorem A. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna look at the interplay, our, our proof is gonna look at, at the interplay between two key quantities. Okay, so uh, two key quantities. So on one hand, there's the excess risk at a given stage of the algorithm. So that's uh, you know, the difference between the loss we currently have of the solution we currently have and the loss of the best solution out there. And on the other hand, there is the distance to the optimizer. In fact, the squared distance. So we're going to look at wt minus w star squared. And what we're going to argue is that these two quantities go down over the course of the algorithm. And basically, if the excess risk is big, then actually this distance to the optimizer goes down a lot. And so as a result, there just can't be very many steps where the excess risk is big. So that means on average over our steps, the excess risk will be small and that will allow us to get the convergence we need. Okay, so the, the basic relationship that we'll call this our claim, um, our main sort of progress claim, I'll call it that. So the, the key progress current claim is the following. that um, for each t, what we get is um, our excess risk at stage at time t can be bounded ab above by some function of how much progress we make in the squared distance. So we'll, we get some, we get some function of the norm of the gradient 
So eta over two times the norm of the gradient plus one over two eta times the improvement in the distance squared. So this is W uh, T minus W star squared minus what it what that distance is on the next step. Okay, so this is our, our main claim. We're going to prove this in a second, but let's just think about what this tells us. It says that if, um, if this quantity is big, then on, the subse on a subsequent step, we make a lot of progress on uh, our distance to the optimizer. And we are, we're living in a, in, a, in a ball of radius R, and so there just can't be very many, you can't like drop that distance over and over and over without eventually hitting W star. Okay. So what we'll argue is that if in a set of bounded diameter, the average of the excess risks is bound is um, going to be bounded by uh, something which scales like R squared. Um, and that will allow us to analyze like how good our final estimator W hat is. So let's prove this progress claim. Uh, so the first part of the proof is to, to relate the, um, uh, to use the fact that we're measuring the gradient and that our function is convex to show that uh, we can, the, the improvement in the excess risk is sort of bounded above by uh, some function of the gradient. Okay, so the picture you should have in mind is this. So here's our excess risk. Here's WT. We're measuring the gradient at WT so that its gradient pulls in this direction. Here's W star. And what we get is that the, um, if I sort of look at the, the extension of the line from WT, from the, this point on the graph to uh, W star, um, I can, I, I can bound the excess risk, so that's this quantity, excess risk. That is, by convexity, that quantity is at most this quantity here. Okay, so the, I'll write it out. So the excess risk at point T is uh, at most, um, GT, sorry, let me rewrite it differently. The, the loss at W star is at most uh, the loss at, um, what am I saying? Least, uh, the loss at WT. Uh, plus the linear term. Okay, so this is the, this here, this is the linear lower bound to, to L, linear lower bound to L. And what we're getting is that the loss at W star is bounded above by that, the value of that linear function at W star. Okay, so this is the, the, inner product of GT and uh, W star minus uh, WT. Okay, so we can rearrange this a little bit to get the, in terms of the S excess risk, which is the thing we care about. So what we get is that the excess risk is at most, um, and I'll, I'll pull out, so sorry, I'm gonna get eta in there in the right place. So I'll multiply through by eta by one over eta on the outside and eta on the inside. And so what I get is like eta times g sub t. And because I've moved things around, I wind up with w t minus w star instead of w star minus w t. All right. So what we get is that um, That we can we can measure our we can bound our excess risk 
by the inner product of the, um, the vector taking it that measures how far we are from W star with this gradient. And so now what we want to do is sort of express this thing in terms of the lengths of the vectors involved. And to do that, we're going to, you know, we'll again draw another picture. So this one uh, we'll sort of take the aerial view. So here's the boundary of C. And we've got our, um, our point WT here. And somewhere out there, there's a minimizer W star. And what we're going to do is, it, you know, in our algorithm, we subtract off eta times gt to get a point ut plus one. Uh, and then we project it down onto the set to get wt plus one. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this triangle that connects wt, ut plus one, and w star. Uh, and we're going to use the fact, so what we're the, the inner product we have now is the inner product between um, uh, this vector and uh, you know, this one here, W star minus WT. Uh, and what we want is to understand how that relates to uh, the length of these, the three vectors in this triangle. And there's sort of a standard way uh, to do that. So recall that for any, um, for all vectors a, b, we have the following relationship uh, that the inner product of a and b is equal to a half times the norm squared of a plus the norm squared of b minus the norm squared of b minus a. Okay, and you get that just by writing b minus a as the inner product of b minus a with itself and sort of developing the square to see what you get. All right, so how can we apply that here? Well, it tells us that uh, our loss, our excess risk that we con we're concerned about, it's at most one over two eta times Uh, the norm of the update we make plus the norm of uh, B. So here the um, A here is, you know, is going to be this first thing. B is going to be this uh, second part uh, plus the norm of the difference, which uh, is just Wt minus W star uh, minus eta times Wt. Okay, and what we see is that this this thing here, this is just uh, Ut plus one minus W star, which is the thing we want, right? Okay, so uh, now we can sort of just simplify things a little bit. The for the GT, we can pull out the eta in front. So we get eta squared divided by eta, so, or eta squared divided by two eta. So that's eta over two times the norm squared of GT uh, plus one over two eta times uh, the distance from WT star to G. So these should be squared, sorry. Um, and we subtract off the distance between u t plus one and w star. Okay, so if we weren't doing any projection, we'd be done now. Oh, we're not quite done, but we basically are because we know that the projection only makes this last term smaller. And so uh, all we get is that um, this first term we can leave alone. And we get one over two eta times the improvement in the length. Okay, so that proves our our claim. 
that's our, our the proof of our progress claim. Okay, that the um, excess risk is bounded above by the progress we make in the square dis squared distance. Okay, so let's use this to actually analyze the risk of our uh, final estimator. So recall that our w hat was the average of the iterates we've seen over the course of the algorithm. Uh, sorry, the average of the actual iterates. Now, um, because L is convex, now this is a, the second place where we use convexity, because L is convex, we can apply what's called Jensen's inequality. That was actually an exercise from um, the previous, a previous uh, class. But we can, it's pretty simple to see what's going on here. So the point is that when we evaluate the loss at w hat, at, which is an average, that's at most the average of the losses. Um, and so if we are interested in understanding how this loss compares to um, the loss of the optimal thing, so this is loss of w hat minus loss of w star, well, that's at most the average of the excess risks that we saw over the course of the algorithm. So this here is the average excess risk. Actually, let's move that over here. Okay, so now we can uh, we can just apply our progress bound to say, well, that's at most the average of the lengths of the gradients. Um, So that's eta over two times the maximum over t of the lengths of the gradients we've seen over the course of the algorithm, uh, plus the average of the decrease in the distance to the estimate to the um, optimal point, the minimizer. Okay, so that's one over uh, two eta t times the, the sum from t equals one to t of Wt um, minus one. I have to shift the indices to get everything to work properly. Sorry. Okay, and so what we get is uh, the maximum of our, our, our gradient. So that was just G squared at most. And now here, uh, you know, most of the, the uh, sorry, I should parenthesize this properly. So most of the terms in this second sum just cancel. So over the course of the algorithm, you get these successive drops. But if I add together the successive drops, that's just the difference between the Place where I started and where I finished. So what I get is one over two eta t times uh, w t plus one minus w star. Um, sorry, the way around. Ah, there we go. So w zero minus w star squared minus w t plus one minus w star squared, or maybe w one. Uh, and now this uh, this last thing here, this is, uh, you know, at, um, well, it's at least zero. This one is at most r, because we're living in a set of diameter at most r. And so what we get is eta over two uh, times g squared plus a one over to eta t times r squared. 
And if I just plug in the right value of eta, what I get is the, uh, you know, the, the average of these terms. And I wind, wind up with a G, the geometric average of these terms, that is. I get what I end up with is G over R over G times R over square root of T. Eta equals um, R over G times one over square root of T. So this is a lot of arithmetic, but the thing I'd like you to sort of focus on is that what have we done? We're taking advantage of this progress claim up here and that says that bounds the how quickly the excess risk can, um, how large the excess risk can be in terms of the progress in the, uh, the distance to the optimizer. And then what we're doing is we're saying, uh, well, the, the other big thing we're, we're doing is that if we're interested in L of W star, that's at most the average over the various iterates of the algorithm of the loss of the excess risk over the course of the algorithm. And, uh, and so that averaging you, you is basically uh, bounded above by uh, how, how much the, the distance to the optimizer here can decrease over the course of the algorithm which is by at most R. Okay. So that was our uh, basic analysis of uh, gradient descent. And so that, that's great. But what we really want to understand is what happens when we have gradient estimates. Okay. What about uh, when uh, GT is, is say, for, for example, uh, our, our, a noisy gradient or a stochastic gradient estimate. Okay, so it turns out that we can actually just get our hands on um, what's going on by just taking expectations on both sides of the uh, progress frame. So. So let's rewrite our progress claim that we had before. Um, but just take expectations on both sides. Okay. So what we get is that the expectation of the excess risk at time t is at most the expectation of the other side. So that's eight over two times the expectation of the norm squared of the gradient, um, plus one over two eta times the expectation, the expected drop in the distance. Okay, and so in order to analyze the algorithm, we just need to bound uh, this norm. The, the norm of our, sorry, the, this, is, uh, this is important. These are the norms of the noisy estimators. Okay, so it's not maybe not quite clear. There's like a step that I'm I've sort of skipped inside. So inside the proof of the progress progress claim. Um, yeah, I should explain that. So the part I skipped is that inside the proof of the progress claim, we took this like linear uh, approximation to the loss at L sub t, and so what we get is the expectation of this quantity. So this is just, this was inside the proof of the progress claim. We had this relationship. If we take expectations on both sides, we get this. Um, so this is the true gradient. Okay, so we only know how to the linear approximation only holds, the linear lower bound only holds for the true gradient. But, but 
notice because we're taking expectations and uh, things are linear. So what we can do is pull this out. We can get like eta times g sub t times the expectation of wt uh, minus w star. Sorry. So we get, you know, this quantity. And now what we can do is uh, pull it out and um, write out the expectation of the that difference of norms we had before. Sorry, let me try to say that again more clearly and correctly. Okay, so we've got this thing. What we're gonna do is we, we need to use the fact that even conditioned on the WTs, on W1 through WT, GT has the right expectation. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at, we're gonna take the expectation over the choice of WT first. So that's the first random variable here of the inner product condition the expectation now over GT. Um, so now, sorry. So now, once we condition on this expression, then we're good. But what we know is GT is the the expectation over the um, coins of the algorithm of the of the teeth step. of GT tilde conditioned on WT. And uh, WT minus W star. Okay, so this is the maybe the subtle part of the proof that I, I, I should have uh, explained a little more clearly, but let me try to fix it. So What's going on? We've got this inner product. We're going to use the fact that GT is actually the expectation of G tilde T. And then we're going to get G tilde T into the place where GT was. So because it's conditioned on WT, G tilde T has the right expectation. We can now use linearity of the inner product to pull this stuff out. And what we get is the expectation over WT and uh, the coins that led into GT tilde of eta g t tilde times w t minus w star. So here in this part, we're using the fact that g t is unbiased. And then the rest of the proof uh, is the same as the original, pro uh, as the original progress claim. Okay, so why does this help us? Well, it allows us to apply our um, progress claim at the level of expectations to bound the excess risk. So then uh, the, the corollary of this new pro expected, expected progress is that the expectation of our final excess risk is at most uh, eight over two times the maximum over time steps of the expectation of GT squared, uh, plus um, one over two eta times these um, the sum of the expected, um, one over two eta t times the sum of the expected drops in the uh, squared norm, and that's still bounded above by r squared as before. So, um, so to analyze uh, the convergence of our algorithm, all we need is 
uh, an unbiased estimate. And we need one where, so the G tilde t should be unbiased and their expected norm squared should be bounded. And um, for both of the, for the stochastic gradient descent and noisy PGD and their combination, we can, we can bound these expected square norms. Um, in particular, if uh, uh, G tilde T is equal to GT plus uh, norm squared, then uh, the expectation of this square norm is exactly the norm squared of the original thing. So that's gonna be at most uh, big G plus a D times sigma squared. So when you add unbiased noise to a vector, the increase in the L2 squared norm is very easy to compute. Okay. And then uh, I won't go through the rest of the calculations to prove this theorem B, but at this point, it's just plugging in the various choices of sigma and eta and T so that uh, the, the parameters line up the way we want. So we've got a family of algorithms. We understand when they converge on, how, how well they converge on um, for convex functions on a bounded domain. Turns out we can argue that's optimal. We don't have, uh, that these algorithms can't asymptotically be improved significantly. Um, we don't have the tools to do that yet. We'll see that later in the class. Uh, but we do have the tools already to understand how this algorithm can be used. Okay, I'll see you guys in class.